for the next part of this session, uh, I would like that to request the two presenters to please take a seat and probably um, colleagues in the audience might have questions for them. Uh, Dr. Duan Lele was not feeling well, so she's not with us right now. But if there are any questions, colleagues from the injury unit can try and answer those questions. Uh, but uh, Dr. Bachani and Dr. Ricardo are here to answer any questions or receive any comments that colleagues in the audience might have for them. Dr. Guruaj. Uh, Dr. Abdul, that presentation on the lessons learned in the MNE was very, very nice and helpful. I had two questions. Uh, one is now that the five years, uh, four years of this work has taken place, did you feel that at any time that in the methodologies that were used, uh, whether it is for the five risk factors and horizontally the five different methods that were used, anything new uh, that could have been done or did we leave out something which could have added any value to that? Secondly, uh, I mean, if the project comes to a close, is there a method that can be given to the governments uh, or to the local partners or to anybody else? Uh, is simplified because I, I don't think in some other countries at least it will be possible to do this vast comprehensive method that has been used. So is there something that can be given back to the countries? Okay, now that you know we have done this for five years, established some good baseline, you could continue this for the next few years. So anything in that direction has it been, was anything learned in that? Right. Uh, yeah, thank you for those questions. Both are very important questions. Um, as uh, you know, when we started off, we tried to standardize our methodologies across countries. So those methodologies um, had to take into account what was possible to be done in each of the countries. And therefore, obviously, the world, I mean, we, we have our set, for example, if we're doing injury surveillance, we have our ideal set of variables that we want to collect, but the variables that we can collect are only a certain number. So yes, there can be, um, over time, as capacity increases, we have found that it would be possible to modify some of these methods to make them better. Um, and that, that varies by the different methods that we've used. Um, to answer your second question, in terms of capacity development at the local level past this program, um, one of the other mandates that we had um, through these, uh, f through this first five years and for all the ten countries was to develop local capacity to be able to continue some of this work. Um, through these four years and nine months, we have, um, as Dr. Heider pointed out um, in the first session, we have conducted several capacity development workshops where these individuals were actually targets of some of the work uh, one of the most recent workshops, for example, that we've done in Cambodia um, over the last couple of months was for police officers at the local levels um, and equip them with simple techniques and methodologies that they could use to be able to collect and report that data and monitor um, the progress in these, this area for what, what's happening in their countries. So yes, that we have been doing and we hope um, that this work will continue um, past this program. Um, thank, thank you, Dr. Bajani. Any other questions for Dr. Ricardo or Dr. Bajani <clears throat> at this stage? Thank you uh, to both of you for the talks, and I'm sorry that uh, Duan Lele um, was not feeling well. Um, I suppose, Ricardo, I have a question for you because you've now made the transition from uh, somewhat of an academic research institution to now a national agency. And maybe if you could reflect a little bit more on what uh, Dr. Guru Raj just asked, which is now that you're in a national agency, how do you think this experience, maybe you can talk from an institution or even a personal level um, of exposure to this type of monitoring and evaluation strategies, how does that help you now that you're part of the National Road Safety Agency? And do you think you will apply this for some of the future work that uh, your agency called Kunapra is going to do? 
one, one of the things that I have found during the past three months that I've been working in the Ministry of Health is that the agency doesn't have the capacity nor the role of doing monitoring and evaluation work. It's too much other, uh, there's so much potential to do other things at a larger scale that we tend to focus on those things instead of doing this. Alone. So of course, the monitoring and evaluation work should be done and I would be more than happy to collaborate with other institutions that could do it in an external way, more efficiently and more ta uh, targeted to the goals of the activities that are being put in place. We cannot do everything as it was claimed in the past that we were the ones who were doing everything. So we should keep doing it. I don't think so. I think that the external point of view could help us to develop new uh, strategies and to guide the work we are doing, which is sometimes lost in the tons and of time that you lose on meetings and meetings and meetings and other administrative work. So, of course, we could benefit from that and we would be more than, help, uh, more than happy to collaborate with institutions like yours and even local institutions to strengthen our activities. So. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, any other questions at this stage? Dr. Flavio. This is uh, in follow-up to Adnan's uh, point. Yesterday, we were provoked by David B. Shai about what would be the statements that we had during the symposium, and I raised one which is still in my mind. So it is addressed to you, Ricardo, but uh, do feel free to comment if you want to. Now, now you are on the other side, half, halfway through it. <laughs> um, my question yesterday was, what do the people who are working for government, like uh, the Ministry of Health or other ministries, what do they want to hear? What's the key? How, how do we get their attention to what we want to do? I know you're not going to tell us the formula, but uh, what I want us to see is uh, what are they looking for? I mean, they cannot do m and &E, as you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. How do we address them in a way that they will feel that the response will be of their benefit? I think what they want to see is that whatever they are doing, it's working and it's impacting on the figures. And that is something tricky because that motivates people to lie and to make uh, conclusions that are commonly uh, misleading. So for ex as I mentioned before, uh, former authorities were always saying that uh, it, there is a reduction, but because they didn't take into account the trend that was observed during a larger period of time. So I think there is a lot of incentives to you know, uh, show that whatever we are doing is correct. And they, we, I don't know if we or they, I, I'm still in the transition, but I think they tend to do whatever they can do and show a lot of success. So they can you know, be, keep working in there and keep, uh, pursuing their job. But that's not something that Dr. Martha Iher, which is the secretary, it's, you know, working on. She's working on gathering all the uh, resources we have and try to obtain more resources so we could implement more effective interventions at the country level. And if we are not showing results in the short term, we would be able to show results in the long term. And that's thinking in the long run, that, that thinking is very difficult. Uh, nobody would understand. Presidential periods are six years and they need to show that we, they were, we were worse before they arrived and we are better after they leave. 